Good morning, church. All right, great morning so far. Welcome to those worshiping online. So glad to have you with us as well. This is the last week. We are wrapping up our summer series called Songs of Summer. We've been going through the Psalms of Ascent. Have you enjoyed this series this summer? So as we, yes, that's awesome. As we wrap up here today, I wanna remind people, here's what, in case you, in case you forgot, in case you've only, in case you've been traveling, whatever the case, just wanna remind you what this series is about. The, the Israelites, three times a year, would make these pilgr- pilgrimages up to Jerusalem for their feasts, for their festivals, to worship God. And the Psalms of Ascent, and Psalm means song, these songs of ascent are songs that they would sing as they were going up in mass, some uh, from days away, some from weeks away, some even from months away, because they would be journeying on foot, and they would sing these songs as they came up to Jerusalem. It was like their road trip playlist, so to speak. And this summer we've looked at songs of repentance and help and worship, security and joy, and hope. The last couple weeks, humility and unity. And and this morning we look at our our ninth one in the series. There are 15 psalms total in the Songs of Ascent. And we're looking at the last one, appropriately. It's Psalm 134. Little fun fact about Psalm 134. It is the shortest of all the Psalms of Ascent and the second shortest in the entire book of Psalms. So we're gonna look at it, we're gonna preach through it line by line, and it's fantastic. Here's what God's word says. Come, bless the Lord. All you servants of the Lord who minister by night in the house of the Lord, lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion, he who is the maker of heaven and earth. This is our psalm for today. This is the word of the Lord. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask him to add his blessing to the reading of his word. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the chance to preach your word. We thank you for the chance to sing We thank you for the chance to celebrate communion a little bit later in the service. What an opportunity to have our our minds and our hearts, our eyes focused on you. Now, Lord, we, we call upon your Holy Spirit to move in power through this message, that you would bring encouragement and conviction where needed, that you would bring challenge, that you would empower us, that you would change us. We pray these things in Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. There's a word, it's an action word. It is like the big, most important word of of this psalm, and it appears three times, and so I'm gonna show it to you again. I'm gonna highlight it in yellow, and it's the word bless. Bless, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. May the Lord bless you. Look at the next slide here. You see it three times. It's in the beginning, it's in the middle, and at the end. And then the next slide I'm gonna show you, you're gonna see that two of the action steps are from us, and one is from God. So if you look at the next slide, You see, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, the Lord bless you. If you were to summarize the entire Psalm 134, this last song of blessing, in 10 words, those would be the words. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, the Lord bless you. That's really kind of, if there was a 10 word big idea, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, the Lord bless you. Now in some of your translations, like the NIV, this word here and here is the word praise, but in the Hebrew, it's the same word, it's the word right here, it's baraka, it's bless. So it's bless, 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 bless the Lord, come bless the Lord, bless the Lord, the Lord bless you. Bless means to kneel or to bow down. So how do we bless the Lord? That might make some people feel uncomfortable. Like, how are we supposed to bless the Lord? Like, the Lord is almighty, he blesses us. No, bless the Lord, praise the Lord, worship the Lord. We bless God for who he is. We bless God for what he's done in our lives. And God blesses us through loving us and providing for us. So bless the Lord. When I think of the word, or or the charge to bless the Lord that we get a couple of times in this psalm, I think there's two aspects of this charge for us. And the first one is this, it's it's an invitation. It's an invitation, come, come bless the Lord. All you servants in the house of the Lord, lift up your hands, bless the Lord. It's an invitation to bless the Lord. Now the historical context, just to paint a picture of what this would look like for the Israelites is they were, they were singing this song, this was the last one, and so as they were arriving up to Jerusalem, the city on a hill, up to Mount Zion, traveling on dirty, dusty roads, now they've arrived. They're at the temple. They're at the place that they've come to for weeks and some of them months. They're here to worship God, they're here for the festival, they're here for the celebration. 
And so, like I said, some have traveled a long distance over a long period of time. And so the psalmist is saying, now do what you came here to do. Do what you've traveled to do. Celebrate the reason why you're here, and that is to bless the Lord. And so he's inviting him into that, into the sanctuary twice. He says, in turn, some of the translations say, and in turn, the Lord will bless you. So it's almost like a cycle of blessing. The Lord's already blessed you, so come bless the Lord, and in turn, he will bless you. And so you can go out and bless other people. So that's the background, the historical context of the Israelites. What about for us? Like, what are we supposed to do? Church, it's the same invitation. It's the same invitation. Come, bless the Lord. Lift your hands, bless the Lord. You might be sitting here and going like, why? Like, why should, we, why should we bless the Lord? And my challenge, my encouragement to you would be, let's just think together of some reasons why we would bless the Lord. Like, think about that in your own life. Bless the Lord. Like, start small. What a beautiful day. Amen? It's a beautiful day. Bless you, Lord, for this day. Think bigger. Maybe you had an amazing meal recently with some friends or something. Lord, bless the Lord. Maybe you had an experience, a shared experience, a trip that was just like fantastic. Bless the Lord. Think bigger than that. Look to your right and left, the person sitting next to you, the people in your family, your kids. Lord, bless you for our kids. Bless the Lord. What about your spouse? You have reason to bless the Lord? Bless you, Lord, for providing me with my spouse. Bless you, Lord. Bigger than that. How about an answered prayer? How about you prayed for healing and he, and he answered in some way? Bless the Lord. Maybe it's your health. Bless the Lord, but think bigger than that. And I wanna show you a few scripture verses. And remember, these Israelites, you want the context? This is, this is on this side of the cross. This is Old Testament. Jesus has not come yet. Everything is pointing to Jesus. He has not come. You and I, we leave, people watching at home, we, leave on, we live on the other side of the cross. We know what happened. God did send his son. Jesus did come to the earth. He did die on a cross for your sins and for my sins. He rose from the grave three days later. We have access to the throne of God through faith in him. That's the side of the cross that we live on so do we have reasons, church, to bless the Lord, to come into the sanctuary, lift up holy hands, and bless the Lord? We do. And let me just show, let's just take a, a, a quick walk through some scriptures that the Lord put on my heart this week. And I go, here's one from Ephesians chapter two. Here's a reason to bless the Lord. This is a big one, I'm starting with a big one. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions, it is by grace you have been saved. Some Christians should say amen. Because look for yourself, you know, you're encouraged. Hey, look for yourself in this scripture. Look for yourself in this passage. So look for yourself in this passage. I'm gonna look for, let's look together. Guess where we are? Right here. You're dead. Spiritually speaking, on your own, on my own, we are dead. Why? We're dead in our transgressions. We're dead in our sins spiritually. That spiritual, all have sinned, all fall short of the glory of God. His standard is perfection. None of us are perfect. We've all sinned. We're dead spiritually. But, but now look for, for God. But because of his great love for us, God who's rich in mercy made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions, what is this? Why would he do this? It's grace. It's unmerited, undeserved favor that God has shown all of us. By grace, you have been saved. That's, that's the truth of the gospel. That's the good news of what God has done through us, to us through his son, Jesus Christ. And for that, church, we bless the Lord. And how about, how about this one from Hebrews chapter eight at verse 12? It says, this is God speaking, he says, I will forgive their wickedness, their iniquities, their sins, their transgressions, I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. What? But God is all knowing, God is omniscient, not just all powerful, he says, I forgive and I choose to forget. That's our God, think of your transgressions, think of the impressive pile 
Think of your iniquities, your wickedness. I think of mine. God says, I forgive and I choose to forget. This is incredible. Now, we as a, we forgive, some of us, some of us better than others, but we do not forget, do we? God Almighty, who knows all, says, I forgive and I forget your sins, your transgressions. We bless the Lord for that. How about this? How about his word? How good is God's word? Living and active. Look at Psalm 119, verse 105. Your word is a lamp for my feet and a light on my path. We have a guidebook in God's word where we go, hey, how, how am I supposed to live? How am I supposed to treat people? What am I supposed to do? Right, it's all right here. This is our guidebook. A lamp for our feet, a light on my path. Hebrews 4.12, I love that one. God's word is living and active. It's sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates our hearts. It cuts right through us. God's word is so good. And so we bless the Lord for his word. We bless the Lord for the truth of the gospel. We bless the Lord that he doesn't just forgive our sins, he forgets. How about this one, Lamentations chapter three. Here's a reason to bless the Lord. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies are, his mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. I love that. Great is his faithfulness. Faithfulness. God's mercies every single morning are new for you. Man, that fires me up. Well, what, how about, oh gosh, I've got some unfaithful people in my life. I had an unfaithful spouse. I've got some unfaithful Friends, good news for you, great is God's faithfulness. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He will always be there for you. He does not change, amen? These are just reasons to bless the Lord. How about this one? I've got one more for you. And this one I was reminded, believe it or not, I was reminded by my own son of this this week. He spoke at Rock, my oldest son Trevor did, and he taught the, the parable of the prodigal son. And I thought, gosh, this is an incredible story. Do you know it? There's a, a man, a rich man who had two sons. He had an older son and a younger son, and the younger son asked for his, his inheritance. He says, I wanna go off and live my own life, I wanna make my own decisions. And asking the father that would be like saying to him, I wish you were dead because I want my inheritance that's gonna come when you're dead. And so the father in the story gives it to him. And he takes his inheritance and he goes off and he wanders away from God and he squanders every last penny. I wanna call your attention to two words, wanders and squanders. I think about my own life, I go, man, I've had some seasons of wandering and squandering. I've wandered away from the Lord and I've squandered the things that he's given me. Anybody else can relate to that? Wandered and squandered. And that story, if you know it, it's a beautiful picture. Well, not this part. The son wanders far off, spends all his money on lavish living and, and prostitutes and parties, and ends up in a pigsty face down. He looks up, he's eating the, the pig food, and he goes, what has become of me? What has become of my life? I need to go back to my father. I need to beg forgiveness. I, I, I'll go back to him. I'll just be a servant. I'll be a farm hand for my father. And so he starts walking back. And he, you know, he's just rehearsing. Oh God, I'm, Father, I'm so sorry. I spent all your money. I've sinned against, he's rehearsing, he's rehearsing, he's rehearsing. And look at this in Luke chapter 15. What a, what a picture at verse 20. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion because he'd be looking for him every day, waiting for him to come back. He ran to his son. He threw his arms around him and he kissed him. Is that not a reason to bless our God? Because all of us have wandered and all of us have squandered. And actually, while I was singing that last song, the Lord put this on my heart. I bet you there's people here right now, you don't know why you're here this morning, but if you looked at the last season of your life, that is what you have been doing. You have been wandering and squandering, and you're going, I don't even know if God would accept me. I don't even know if God would. God would not just love and accept you. God runs to you. He pursues you. He's filled with compassion for you. Right when you get up the words that you want to confess to him, he goes, shh. And he throws around his arms around you, and he kisses you. This is the picture of our God. And if you're like me, like the younger brother in the story, 
it, it's just, it's a little bit too overwhelming. It sounds too good to be true. And he pushes back from his father in his story and he starts to go into the lines that he has rehearsed. He starts to go into his confession and the father stops him, shh, shh. And look at these next verses, quick. Bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and now he's alive. He was lost and is found. This is a picture of the love of our God for you and for me. For anybody who has wandered and squandered, and I saw quite a few hands go up. These are reasons, just a few of them, to bless the Lord. So many reasons, 10,000 reasons to bless the Lord. This is such good news. So it's an invitation. Come, bless the Lord, praise him. Praise him in the sanctuary, lift up your hands. Bless the Lord. And here, listen to me, you're always welcome. You don't have to be shy. You don't have to hold back. And I know what you're thinking, oh gosh, you got in a fight with your spouse on the way to church? It happens. Set it aside, it's okay, you're here now, bless the Lord. You got in an argument with your neighbor this week? Forget it, bless the Lord, you're here now. You lose touch with your kids, you don't know what's going on, there's an estrangement, you're here now, bless the Lord. You're ashamed of your feelings for that person, you're ashamed that you got caught up in that gossip, don't worry about it, you're here now, bless the Lord. You lost your temper at home or at work, you blew up on your spouse, bless the Lord, you're here now, set that aside. You're embarrassed at how many times you've quit, how many times you've wandered and squandered. You are here now, Bless the Lord. You're like, I wanna bless the Lord, but I don't like the worship songs. Good news, the worship's not for you. <laughs> it's for him. Bless the Lord. Come into the sanctuary, bless the Lord. It's an incredible invitation, but listen, church, listen. It's not just an invitation. It's another thing too, and here's what it is. It's a command, and you get it twice. Come, bless the Lord. All you servants in the house of the Lord at night, lift up your hands in the sanctuary. Bless the Lord. It's a command, and I know something about us, because I'm one of us. We love invitations. Hey, come to this party. Come over to my house for dinner. Let's go hang. We love invitations. We do not like commands. We do not like people telling us what to do. And here the psalmist, God, through his word, is telling us what to do. Come and bless the Lord. Bless him. And let me show you a couple things that are easy to skip over as we drill down a little bit into the psalm. Look at this. Come bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord who minister by night in the house of the Lord, lift up your hands in the sanctuary. Come all you servants of the Lord who minister by night in the house of the Lord. Couple things to point out. Who, who are the people who minister in the house of the Lord? Who work? These are the priests. And all of the priests came from a certain tribe, the Levites. So the encouragement of the psalmist is to the people who actually work in the house of the Lord, the priests, and who work at night to lift your hands and worship the Lord. Bless the Lord. Now, hey, put that, can you put that back up just one more time? This word right here, by night, what does that mean? Why would that be in there? Because here's, the, here's what the psalmist is trying to point our attention to, that these, these priests worshiped the Lord in the house of the Lord, and they worked around the clock. And some of the Israelites would be there around the clock. At night means even when, and this is, if you look at the, the words, this is late at night. This is like the, the graveyard shift, the swing shift. So the psalmist is saying, even when it's at night, bless the Lord. Even when, and at, how about this? Nighttime in your faith. Now, it's easy to bless the Lord in the noonday sun when everything's going well, but even when it's not going well, even when it's at night in your life, even when it's not easy, even when you feel tired, even when you don't feel like it, bless the Lord. And this is the point where, if you're like me, you kind of push back and go, well, we're not priests. Like, that's a specific command, if you will, to the priests. 
But again, I come back to something I said earlier. We live on this side of the cross. So through the cross, Jesus did something to all of us, for all of us. And that is he reconciled us to himself. So now we, he calls us things. Look at 1 Peter chapter 2 at verse 9. But you, that's the collective church, you, we, all of us. Not just Israelites, us through the cross. But you are a chosen people, a royal, what's this word right here? Priesthood. We're all priests in God's eyes through faith in Christ. A holy nation, God's special possession, that you may do what? Declare the praises of him who called you out of the darkness and into his wonderful light. So it is a command not just for the priest, but church. It's also for us. Because we are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. So if you really want to know how to apply, because I know we sit here and we go, how do I apply this? Like, what am I supposed to do with Psalm 134? I get it, bless the like, what? Here's where the rubber meets the road. It's how you answer again and again and again in your life, through your life, throughout your life, this question right here. Will you bless the Lord even when you don't feel like it? This is what it comes down to. Will you bless the Lord even when you don't feel like it, even when it's at night, even when it's hard, even when you're busy? Will you come? Look at me, church. Will you come and bless the Lord even when you're busy, even when you're booked, even when you're tired, even when you're angry or annoyed or you feel distant, you're going through a divorce, or you're battling cancer or it's inconvenient? Even when you don't feel like it, will you, will I, will we bless the Lord? Will we worship him? Will we praise him? Will we lift our hands in the sanctuary in the church? Will we bless the Lord even when we don't feel like it, counting on the fact that the last verse of this psalm is true, that when we do, the Lord will in turn bless us. And that we can go bless others. Will we worship the Lord even when we don't feel like it? Let me tell you a story. It happened about three weeks ago. I, I, I needed three weeks of emotional distance from it to even be able to tell it in the midst of a, a, a worship service because it was so annoying. <laughs> I told you, we, we had this trip, this family trip to Hawaii. What I have not told you is that I put boundaries around this trip where we we're gonna relax as a family for a, a week and we were flying back on Friday at noon and then I was gonna take all Friday and all Saturday, five hours on a flight, Friday night, all day Saturday, and that's when I was gonna write the sermon for Sunday. I need about two full days. I need like 15 to 20 hours to write a sermon. And so that was my time. But what I didn't tell you is that the best laid plans, we, we showed up at the airport, we had hung out with some friends there who go, oh, this airport's so great, it's so quick, it's so, it's so easy, everybody's so nice. Um, just show up, all, all you need is, uh, you know, maybe an hour before and you'll be fine. So we showed up, and this is, I gotta start by saying, it's my fault, we showed up a little late. And so I go to print out our uh, boarding passes, and the thing says, no, you're at, you're, you're at or under 45 minutes before, and so you gotta go to talk to the gate, the, the agent right here. And so I go, okay, get in line, I go, okay, yeah, we're a little close. Now granted, the airport's about the size of this sanctuary, so we were good, it's in Kona. We didn't have bags. I'm like, we're gonna sail through like a TSA pre. I mean, need I go on? <laughs> so I go to the front of the line and the guy says, actually, I, I can't, actually, first of all, I went to a gal because there was nobody in like the first class line and there was two people in this line. So I walked up, I go, hey, is there any way you could just print our boarding passes for us? We'll just be right out of here. There's nobody in this line. She goes, no, I can't help you. You have to go to the back of that line because you're not first class. Okay, but this line's empty. She's like, yeah, I just can't. Okay. So I go back to that line, then we wait for those two people, and I walk up, and it's another guy, and he says, yeah, I can't print the boarding pass. I go, well, so I've, I've been later than this, and people oftentimes have just said, here, I'll print your passes, and you'll make it, no problem, or you can try to make it. Like, you're, what can we do here? And he looked at me, and he says, your only hope is to get through security, TSA, with no boarding passes, and only the supervisor, who right now is at the gate, can print you your boarding passes and let you on the plane. So I said, you want all five of us to get through TSA security with no boarding passes? Like, that's impossible. He goes, that's your only hope. So I go, man, this is not being very helpful, but I was pretty confident because it's like, it's so quick. And anyway, so we hustle over 
And I don't even know what came out of my mouth. I, this is my, maybe the biggest miracle of the whole story. We all got through TSA pre with no boarding passes. I mean, they sent the rest of our family through the, like the, the normal thing, but they let them go to the front of the line. I hustled through, they just, she said, if I look at this, if I take your license and it goes through and it comes up TSA pre, I will let you through with no boarding pass. I'm like, hey, great. She goes through, I have it. I sprint to the gate, I get there. There's about five minutes left and I'm huffing and puffing. I got my little carry on, I go, whoo, I'm so glad we made it, it's five Scots, they're coming right now, they're coming through, like, whoa, I've never cut one this close, we've never missed a flight in our lives, so I'm like, and he looked at me, both of them, and he go, I'm sorry, I, I, I can't print your boarding passes, I go, hold on a sec. We're inside the time, like, the, the guy at the gate, she said, he said, only the supervisor, where's the supervisor? Oh, she's right out there, she was out on the tarmac, I mean, this is like, you walk right out and get on the plane on the tarmac, it's like super quick and convenient. I'm looking at our plane, it's still there, the door's open, I mean, we're good. Family shows up, they're huffing and puffing. The supervisor walks out and she goes, okay, I mean, we're under time, I gotta get this plane, I gotta get this going, I gotta shut this door, we got three minutes left. I said, okay, here's the situation, he told me, blah, 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 can you please print those and let us get on? She looks at me, she goes, you really need to be to the airport earlier. I know, I know, <laughs> I know, I know. So she's trying to teach me a lesson and I'm just playing along. And then, so then she looks at me and she goes, you know what, I'm not gonna do it for you. And I was like, okay, hold on. <laughs> like, we're here, the door's open. And I said, she goes, no, you need to be here earlier. I'm not gonna make an exception. I'm like. Okay, so at that point, my son Trevor was like about to blow a gasket. I said, just calm down. So I looked at her and I go, just to clarify, I really was at like this level on the outside in terms of. <laughs> I said, just to clarify, you are the only person with the power and the authority, I use those words, to print our passes and let us on, and you're choosing not to do that. And she looked at me and she said, that's correct. I said, okay. And she walked out and we missed our flight. And we couldn't get on a flight until the next day. Same flight, 24 hours later. So now the, the, the stress of like, I gotta write a sermon. I, so we call some friends, we end up back at their house. Overnight, they were super gracious, friends of ours who live in Kona. I said to him, the, this is my friend Chris who lives there, I said, okay, I don't wanna be rude, but I, I, need, I need like 20 hours between now and I got some time on the flight and all this other stuff, like I need to hold myself up in your office and just work and study. He said, no problem. So he gave me his office, shut the door, I put in a good three, four, five hours right there and a few hours in, Bridget knocks on the door and she goes, hey, can I ask you something? I said, sure. She goes, our hosts, would like us to go to a worship service tonight at the YWAM, like discipleship training service. It's just right down the road, and it's just like a couple hours. And I go, ho, 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 ho. I go, I just don't know, have t I don't have time. Like, we cannot do that. I, our kids wouldn't want to, like, we were just, we were frustrated we missed the flight, and I was like feeling it. I go, I don't know, she, and so Bridget says, well, why don't you just, why don't you just think, and you just, you just pray about that, and then I'm gonna come. <laughs> So I do. I just feel like the Lord says, I know you don't feel like it, but will you come worship me? So I come out and I go, it's the right thing to do. We're going. So we go to the worship service and I am, I, I, don't, I can't remember a time in my life where I wanted to worship less. I just, I was just, I was not in the mood. I was upset. I was angry at the, I was just like, I was angry at myself for not being there earlier. I was just, everything was wrong. I was so frustrated. I was stressed. And then the music started, and there was 45 minutes of worship. This is the, the last night of a high school, kind of like the equivalent of our houseboats. Last night of a high school camp, 45 minutes of worship, but these students were just going for about 300 of them. And the Lord just kind of lifted my heart and my spirits. And I wanted to share with you just two brief videos of these students worshiping. I want you to, I want you to see what the Lord used to pull me into a place where I could actually bless him even when I didn't feel like it. Here's one where he said, this is gonna be our last song. We're gonna start low and slow and then we're gonna go for it. So here's a, a, about a one minute clip, 45 seconds of that song. I 
<laughs> this is going on around me. <laughs> okay, that's good. So, that's good. So as you might imagine, my spirits are lifting. And I'm getting into it, and my hands are going to all these types of things. And that was the last song. And I thought, okay, the Lord, you, you pretty much pulled me out of it. I bless you. Now I need to go back and write the rest of the sermon and be up late and wake up early, all those types of things. And the students started chanting, one more song, one more song, one more. I'm like, wow. So here's what we did. They said, we're gonna do one more. And I just wanna show you a little clip of this last song and how much they got into this. It's one that we sing all the time. That's good, you can cut it. You see the guy crowd surfing too in the middle of it? I'm like, it was unbelievable. Like, this is, <laughs> okay Lord, you got me. Uh, I wanna share with you a quote. It's from Eugene Peterson, who wrote a book about the songs of ascent. And here's what Eugene Peterson said. One person says, I don't feel like worshiping, so I'm not going to church. I will wait till I feel like it, and then I'll go. Another person says, I don't feel like worshiping, so I will go to church and put myself in the way of worship. Key phrase, put myself in the way of worship. And here's what happens. In the process, she finds herself blessed and begins, in turn, to bless. This is, this is a quote that captures Psalm 134. I have to confess, it's obvious, I did not feel like worshiping the Lord. I didn't feel like blessing the Lord. I went to church really for the reason to just put myself in the way of worship, but in so doing, while wow, the Lord blessed me and filled me up and put me in a place where I could go and bless others. Now, we got a few minutes left. We get to participate in communion together, and I'm gonna take the next few minutes and we're gonna practice putting this psalm right into play. Because some of us came in here and you're ready to worship. You feel like it, you were excited, you were, you were bold, your hands are whatever, you're singing loud, you're ready to worship, and then there's a, probably a bunch of us in here, like you came in here and you, you didn't really feel like being here today. You don't really feel like singing, you don't feel like putting your hands, you don't really feel like it. That's just honest. But we put ourselves in the way of worship. Come, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, lift up your hands. Are we willing to do that even when we don't feel like it. And I think the ultimate reason, if we go here and you can get your communion elements out and then we're gonna receive communion together and then we're gonna sing a song. We're just gonna respond to God through a closing song. Because we look at this and if we had a, a communion table on it, we have one that, that's, uh, that's brown and it says, do this in remembrance of me. The night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it after giving thanks, and he said, this is, my, this is my body given for you. In the same way, after, cup or, after supper, he took the cup. He said, this cup represents the new covenant of my blood shed for you. And every time you do this, you remember the Lord's death, you remember what God has done for you. Every single time, body broken, blood shed. That's what Jesus has done for us, body broken, Bloodshed. I don't feel like work. I don't feel like worshiping. Body broken, bloodshed. I'm tired. Body broken, bloodshed. I'm annoyed. I feel distant. Body broken, bloodshed. I'm going through a difficult thing in my life. Look at Jesus says, body broken for you, bloodshed for you. This we do in remembrance of Him. We always have a reason. 
This is the reason we can always bless the Lord. Amen? Always and forever we can bless the Lord. Let's pray and ask God's blessing over these elements, then we'll receive it, and then we'll sing a song together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of your Son. It is the good and the perfect gift, just what we needed to pay the price, the penalty, the ransom for our sins. Jesus, we thank you for your obedience, even unto death, death on the cross, just to, to reconcile us by faith into right relationship with God the Father. Thank you, Jesus, for going to the cross. Thank you for having the power to be raised to new life three days later. Holy Spirit, thank you that you indwell our hearts, that you conform us into the image of our Savior, that you're working even now. We pray that you would even communicate the, the means of your grace, your gospel message to us as we participate into communion. Jesus, we pray these things in your precious name and all God's people said, amen. Let's participate, let's partake together, church. When you're ready, church, would you stand with me? I just want to, want to be sensitive to one thing. There is a line in there that we didn't really speak too much, and it's the lifting of hands. I want to acknowledge something. Some of us don't feel comfortable lifting our hands in worship, and that's okay. But I'm mindful of, of what John Calvin said. He said, why do we lift our hands when we pray? Sometimes we pray for people and we lift a hand kind of in their direction. Why do we do that, John Calvin said. He answered his own question. He said, is it not so we lift our hearts also? So as we sing this closing song, 10,000 reasons to bless the Lord, just think about that. Just think about that. Sometimes we use our hearts, we worship with our hearts to lift our hands, and sometimes we lift our hands in order to lift our hearts. Does that make sense? Church, come, bless the Lord. Lift up your hands and bless the Lord. And in turn, may the Lord bless you. Yeah. 
sounds so good. You sound so good. What a privilege to bless the Lord. Um, I hope you enjoyed the summer series. I hope you enjoyed the song, Songs of Summer. Um, and I got some really good news, fun news for something that we're going to start next week. And that is, we've prayed about this, we've talked about it as a team. And, and normally we do something a little bit more topical to start in the fall. But, but next week we're going to start a 14-week deep dive, heavy application though, and we're gonna teach through the entire book of Romans. We're gonna love it. It's gonna be amazing. I'm a little intimidated by it. I'm excited. I'm excited for it. We're gonna take a two-week break in the middle of there for our For the World weekend, the last week of September, and of course, Serve Day, which is the first Sunday in October. And then we're gonna go back to Romans and it's gonna take us all the way up into our Christmas series. So I'm super excited about that. If you wanna even begin like reading Romans just to ready your heart and your mind for what we're gonna do. And we it won't be a verse by verse, but chapter by chapter for the most part, we're gonna go through that entire book. And I'm super excited for that. God bless you. Hope you had an amazing time. I hope you have an incredible day. Many, many reasons to bless the Lord, amen? amen.